Good morning, folks. We've got a look at weather, Ryugu, heliobiology, and recurrence times for powerful geomagnetic storms. We're due. Had a minor geomagnetic storm overnight, so we're starting at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on the sun. We're very calm. The bright active regions aren't flaring and the dark coronal holes continue turning through. We also continue to see increased plasma filament activity at small scales. One of the now departed coronal holes had its solar wind arrive at Earth yesterday. Top left, you see the purple line rise up on the chart, and that's the solar wind speed. It drove geomagnetic instability in a brief low-level storm condition, which you see bottom right. It was minor in all ways. While the snow was piling up in the Rockies, twin tornadoes dropped in Texas off the convergence line. Looking ahead to tonight, more snow for the western side of the system and more severe weather on the eastern side. The low is powerfully churning as it marches across the states. Up next, our aesthetic piece of the day comes from asteroid Ryugu and the impact of the projectile that loosed particles up into its exosphere to be collected by the spacecraft. Moment of impact there. Folks, we have another article describing how the Arctic polar vortex is changing. It's getting colder there, breaking records, and one of the main things working this part of the world is Earth's weakening magnetic field. More records will be broken as time marches on. We've got an excellent paper reviewing the cardiac and psychological aspects of interacting with the electromagnetic output of a star, from sudden heart attack deaths to loss of cognitive function and emotional instability. Good review. Last but not least, an excellent look at solar storm recurrence. It's one of those papers that makes you wish the sun was going into grand minimum now instead of being ahead of schedule in the 11-year sunspot cycle after only 15 months of it. But their key finding is that based on the 1900s, Major solar storms like the 1989 Quebec blackout come every 40 years. But they include the caveat that if larger storms existed prior to the 1900s, then that timeline would have to shorten and the maximum storm power would have to rise. Since we know there were numerous larger storms in history, let's go slightly less than a 40-year scale. And folks, these are by far the most important geomagnetic storms on record. They're happening about every 30-something years, and the only notable geomagnetic storms not on this list are the 1972 and 2003 events, which indeed were less powerful, but made news because they managed strong electrical disruptions. Now, in terms of most major storms, these are coming every three cycles, not four, and we're due for another round of the cycle this coming maximum. Any such event today with Earth's weakening magnetic field, and we're in big trouble. Sure, we could get lucky, and it might just be like the Quebec blackout in 1989, or it could send the entire world back to darkness. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.